Hello, my name is Massimiliano Patacchiola from the University of Edinburgh. In this video, I'm going to introduce our latest work, Bayesian Meta Learning for the Future Setting via Deep Kernels. So I would like to start by defining the problem. What is future learning? Future learning, we want to predict the class membership of data points in a query set Q, given a few label point in a support set S. Query and support are generally grouped in a task T. With the term shot, we identify the number of data points per class, and with the term weight, the number of classes. Here you can see two examples. We have task one and task n. In both cases, we have a support. You can see that here we have just one image per class. It means that we are in the one shot, three way setting. At training and evaluation time, what we do is just to sample tasks from a meta training and meta evaluation dataset. This represented in this slide, as you can see, we have a dataset of different classes. From this, we are going to sample the classes that are going to be used for our tasks. Recent work has tackled the future setting in different ways. In the future transfer approach, what we do is taking all these different tasks, put them inside the dataset, and apply standard supervised learning with transfer. Um, we can uh, use different methods in this case, like standard transfer learning, baseline plus plus, simple shot. Metric learning approaches try to learn a metric in the Latin space. There are matching network, prototypical networks, relation networks, and so on. Meta learning approach, we want to learn to learn. And we have methods like model agnostic meta learning or MAML, MAML plus plus, and meta SGD. Bayesian methods follow a Bayesian framework. We have Bayesian MAML, Versa, and Alpaca. Let's try to focus on Bayesian hierarchical methods and some of the differentiable counterparts, for instance, MAMA, that has a Bayesian interpretation. Um, they want to um, find two sets of parameters. We have a set of shared parameter theta that is common to all n tasks that is optimized in the outer loop of MAMA, and then a set of task-specific parameter rho that is instead optimized in the inner loop of MAMA. You can see here the probabilistic graphical model for the regression case where we have the set of shared parameters theta outside of the plate, rho inside the plate for each one of the n tasks. And then uh, we have x and y being scalar input and output, and f, the underlying generative hidden function we want to estimate. Now, the problem with uh, these hierarchical methods is that um, it's cumbersome to manage two level of inferences. We have to impose a prior on both the top and the bottom level of the hierarchy. And doing this on a differentiable way with differentiable methods like MAML is also quite difficult because it's a stable. We have to estimate high order derivatives and back propagate from the inner to the outer loop. What we propose in this paper is to marginalize out raw task specific parameter through a Bayesian integral and just estimate the set of shared parameter theta through a maximum likelihood type 2 approach. This is simple and efficient because we get uh, rid of the inner loop, flexible since it can be used for both classification and regression, and also robust since uh, with the Bayesian framework, we can provide a measure of uncertainty. Yeah, we show how we can do this for the regression case. We exploit the Gaussian processes and we use a deep kernel that is shared across tasks. In practice, we take the kernel and we transfer it from one task to the other. Therefore, we call this method deep kernel transfer, or DKT. At training time, we maximize the marginal likelihood over the kernel parameter theta and the network wave phi. This has a closed form expression, as you can see here. We have a data fit and a penalty term. The penalty term is a form of uh, Occam razor, model selection. At inference time, when we get a new task or a new data point, what we do is to estimate a predicted distribution that has a closed form expression. For each point, we get a mean and a variance, with the variance representing the confidence in our prediction. For the classification case, things are more problematic since we have an unconjugate prior. To solve this issue, we can use standard variational approaches. But the problem is that we are introducing in this way an inner loop, that is what we wanted to get rid of. We need an inner loop to approximate the uh, posterior using our variational um, distribution. Uh, we don't want to do that, right? We want a simple method. What we propose is to use a one versus rest scheme through label regression. What we do is just to fit one Gaussian process for each one of the different classes, 
and treat the classification case like a regression problem. At the same time, we maximize the marginal likelihood given by the sum of the marginals for each one of the C individual class outputs. While at inference time, given a new point or a new task, what we do is just to estimate the predictive mean for each one of the C classes, pass this predictive mean to a sigmoid, enforcing a probabilistic interpretation, and then choose the class with the highest probability. This is a look over the algorithm. You can find both the training and test function. At training time, we have our training loop, and inside this loop, we are going to sample one task. Then we assign to Tx and Ty the input and target for that task. Line five, you can see that we are estimating our log marginal likelihood. Line six, we are updating the kernel parameter theta and the network wave phi. At the end of the training, we return the two sets of parameters. In the test function, we are taking as input a new task T star and the set of parameters that we have learned before. And what we return is just the predictive distribution over the new data point. Now we can see some regression experiments. Here we have periodic function prediction. We just sample different periodic functions represented by the blue curve on the right plots. And on this trajectory, we sample a few data points, in this case, five. Then we want to approximate with our model this blue curve, this is the red curve. As you can see, on the top, we have feature transfer and MAMA. They don't provide a very good approximation. In particular, if we consider an out of range portion uh, on which the methods have not been trained, represented by the dotted curve, blue curve here, we can see that approximation of feature transfer is MAMA is quite bad. Instead for, for DKT, uh, for DKT with RBF and DKT with a spectral kernel, we have much better fit. And moreover, we also have the red shadow represented, uh, representing uncertainty. On the left, we can see some quantitative results, and you can see that the uh, error for DKT is the lowest one. We have another regression task at post trajectory. Here, we provide us input images taken from a discrete manifold of at poses. And uh, on the left, you can see the quantitative results showing the lowest er error for our method. On the right, you can see an experiment for uncertainty quantification. In this case, we are corrupting one of the images with a red frame, and then we want to see what's the prediction at that location. Uh, for future transfer, we have a wrong prediction for that location, while for DKT, we have a better prediction, and more importantly, we have a large variance indicating uncertainty in the prediction. For the classification case, we compare our method against many others, including uh, MAMAL, Bayesian methods, and uh, feature transfer methods. As you can see, we have the highest accuracy across all benchmarks. In particular, we tested on CAB, Mini ImageNet, and cross-domain settings like from Omniglot to NIST and from Mini ImageNet to CAB. In conclusion, we have presented deep kernel transfer or DKT, that is a new Bayesian uh, method for tackling the future setting. We see that DKT is quite efficient since it doesn't require any inner loop optimization, it's flexible since it can be used for both classification and regression, and it's robust since it can provide a measure of uncertainty. The experiment has shown that DKT can compete with recent state of the art on various benchmarks. We should work, we would like to focus on testing DKT on other challenging future setting, for instance, on class imbalance and continual adaptation, where the method has the potential to try. If you have any question, you can send me an email to this address. Thank you for watching.